ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Elmore deep, left side three, and good! From 30 feet, John Elmore! The Drive with Paul Swan. It's the Friday edition. It's August 3rd. Welcome in. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Here for the full hour, we'll take your phone calls at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Coming up this hour, yesterday we talked to Kevin Long, Marshall women's soccer coach. Today, Chris Grossi is going to join us on the program. We're going to talk to the men's coach, get his thoughts on the upcoming season, and get his feeling on what the schedule looks like and everything going on with the head coach of the soccer team. So we've got that for you coming up in a few minutes. And i got a few things to get into as well with you. Uh, we'll get into uh, what's happening with Marshall football itself. Right now is day one of camp. What I mean by that is they are right now on the field doing work. Obviously, we couldn't be there. We're here. But for some of you who are going, there's a lot of regulations and rules as far as camp's concerned, and of course, uh, you've got to be a big green member. You've got to be a season ticket holder. You've got to be a student if you're going to attend. So if you're not one of those three, there are options for you. They'll make sure you become a season ticket holder if you want to go. Or if you are not a big green member, they'll sign you up. So that's not going to be a barrier for entry if you really want to go. Several practices are scheduled. Most of them are going to be mid-afternoon uh, as we get through the weeks. They'll start working their way into the evening. Now, there are preseason football regulations, and the compliance department once again has put out the rules. Uh, some slight changes, nothing really, but preseason, there's a maximum of 25 on-field practices. Now, a walkthrough does not count unless it's the only daily activity conducted. So a walkthrough doesn't count unless it's the only activity. Now, two-a-days are gone, no longer permitted at any point in the season. So those are gone. Three continuous hours of recovery time required after an on-field practice. That means no physical activity, meaning medical treatment are allowed during recovery time. So if someone wants to put in some film work, someone needs some medical treatment, some um, meetings need to be held, that's fine. Now, there is a period of breaking in. I mean, you're basically getting acclimated. So there's a breaking in period. And this doesn't matter what the date is. It's from when a student athlete who arrives, if they arrive on the first day or after the first day, they still got to go through this five-day acclimation period. And that means one on-field practice per day, maximum of three hours. Also, one hour walkthrough in addition to practice, no football equipment. That's the acclimation period. Now, August 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th, different rules. And then August 7th, different rules as well. So today and tomorrow, headgear only. So if you go to practice tomorrow, headgear only for these kids. Starting on the 5th, you're going to see headgear. You're going to see shoulder pads. So these kids are going to start to build their way up. And then on August 7th, full pads. Now, if you don't know what's allowed and not allowed, the guidelines are this. No undergirdles, no spider pads, no shock vest, compression shorts with built-in thigh pads. None of that is allowed. So this will go from August 7th all the way to August 20th. August 20th, first day of classes. Now, before classes start, you can have a maximum of 110 student athletes. Uh, you can have a maximum of three hours of on-field practice activity and a one-hour walkthrough may occur after three hours of recovery time. Again, um, you get that spacing. Footballs are permitted as only piece of football equipment after a five-day acclimation period. Minimum of one day per week off. So you've got this acclimation period, and then before classes start, all of this. August 20th, first day of class. Now, after classes start, maximum of four hours per day. And you can have a maximum of 20 hours per week, and you have to have a minimum of one day off per week. So this goes from August 20th all the way to September 1st. September 1st, first day of competition. 
So that's what your preseason football regulations look like. Marshall Compliance putting that out earlier today. It's a good read. You want to brush up on that. Just keep yourself aware because I know some of you are going to be going to practice. That's going to be an option for a lot of you. And so if you got questions, Compliance uh, definitely has answers, trying to make sure that you are educated and knowing what's going on. I think it's a, a good guideline to, just to have posted. We've posted it in the studio as well, so we're going to keep it up here for everyone to keep an eye on. So if you've got questions, uh, now you know. All right, um, here's what's coming up. We're going to talk soccer here in a few minutes. Uh, Chris Grassi is going to join us on the program, and we're going to talk to him. I've got a couple of things I want to get into with you. Of course, Marshall's opening up camp today. You know that. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Also, we will talk about television as far as Conference USA is concerned. It's not directly a Conference USA issue, but it's going to be because BN Sports is a partner of Conference USA. BN's having some problems right now. What's the value of BN if nobody's able to see BN? Right? Okay. That's where I'm going to start off with that because VN's having some problems. And if nobody's able to see their programming, then I don't think there's much value in that partnership. I'm not privy to the deals. But if they're falling and people are not able to watch them, then I don't know where that package can go with Conference USA. Is that something Conference USA can maybe eventually get out of? I don't think they would, at least this season. But in the future, I would offer those up a little bit more. Maybe, hey, ESPN wants to pick up a few more of those games. So we'll go into all of that. But we're going to talk soccer when we come back from break. So Chris Grassi is going to join us on the program, the head coach of the Marshall men's soccer team. And then later on, we'll work your phone calls in, and we'll go over all of this when we continue. The Drive is on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Friday edition. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Still to come, we hope to hear from the head soccer coach. Marshall University, Chris Brassi. So until we hear from him, we'll take time for your phone calls at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Now, I was mentioning earlier about the problems that BN Sports is having. And right now, what problems they're having is carriage. They have lost Comcast Xfinity and now Verizon Fios and carriage disputes between the TV providers and the network. Now, BN's a soccer network. They're not primarily a college football network, but they're venturing into that product, and so Conference USA and BN have the partnership. But BN Sports, according to the reports, had a deadline of midnight on Wednesday to reach a deal with Verizon Fios, but as of 30, Thursday morning, they got dropped and just couldn't come to a deal. But according to Verizon, they said, we gave BN a reasonable offer, an offer that was in line with the marketplace. So their offer was pretty good, we think. Of course, Verizon's going to be pro-Verizon. And they said that they rejected their offer, demanded a significant increase to the fees they pay for the channel. And so that's what Verizon said. Now, uh, BN said that they learned late last night in the press release uh, that they put out that despite its offer to extend its contract with Verizon on the same rates and terms, Verizon chose to abruptly cease negotiations and to drop BN Sports from the platform. And this is from uh, their deputy manager director, um, Antonio Bricinio. Verizon falsely claims that BN sought significant rate increases. In fact, it reads, BN offered to continue under the same modest fee increase structure it established when it launched in 2012. Verizon conversely sought to repackage BN to a higher, more expensive tier where customers would have to pay more for the content they love. BN will not allow Verizon to use its content in this manner and will continue to fight to achieve carriage in lower price tiers on behalf of consumers and content partners. Okay, so what you got here is BN wants to stay in a tier where people are going to be able to watch them. And Verizon's like, okay, we want to put you in a higher tier. People are going to have to pay. And they want you so much, they're going to have to pay. 
And so you've got an impasse right now. Yeah, the truth, I'm sure, is somewhere in the middle. BN probably wanted um, a fair increase. And Verizon's like, yeah, you know, we're not getting much out of this channel. We're not getting much out of this, so yeah, we'll carry it, but we're going to have to redo the deal. And so there you go. They're gone from Verizon. They're gone from Comcast Xfinity. Now, what does that mean for Conference USA? It means something because now if you're a Comcast Xfinity customer and you watch BN because they've got their herd game on, that's probably not an option for you now. Now, how much is this going to impact Thundering Herd Athletics? You're going to be okay because you go down the schedule. Marshall's first two games are on ESPN+. Plus, Then on ESPNU. Then on CBS Sports Network. Then on Stadium. Back to CBS Sports Network. Back to Stadium. Then CBS Sports Network. Facebook. CBS Sports Network, Facebook, ESPN Plus, Stadium Facebook, and Stadium Facebook. So you're okay. You're a Herd fan. You're good. You don't even have to worry about this. This isn't going to affect you this year. But does Conference USA continue to partner with BN? And I'm going to have to say they need to take a pass on this. They're going to have to take a pass on BN. The quality's fine. B did a fine job. There's no doubt in my mind that the quality of the BN broadcast was fine. Nothing, nothing wrong there. It's just if you're gonna be somewhere, if you're going to be somewhere, be seen, my friends. You need to be somewhere where you're seen. And the problem here is BN isn't really offering that much exposure to Thundering Herd or Conference USA Athletics. Honestly, there is no really true benefit to being on BN. At least if you're a Herd fan, I don't see it. I don't see any benefit whatsoever. Stadium's okay. You know, stadium's getting better because they're looking to at least expand. They're putting some investment in their product. They're hiring Brett McMurphy. Brett McMurphy, who just probably, in his investigation, came to a story that's going to cost Urban Myers his job. And he's hot right now. He's a hot property to the point where ESPN actually had him back on the air. Here's a guy who has been paid 18 months of severance to not work. He can't go anywhere else. He can't work for a third party. So Brett McMurphy has been taking his time away from ESPN by increasing his social media profile and is still doing what he does, breaking stories. And so Stadium is becoming a little bit more credible. So Stadium's fine. Then you've got the ESPN package. And you know what? I don't care if it is ESPNU, ESPN+. Plus. I don't care. It's good because you're back on the ESPN platform. And trust me, a lot of people are paying for the ESPN+. Plus. Not sure how overwhelming it's going to be right away, but if you are a fan of ESPN football and you want to see some games, you have $4.99 a month out of your pocket. Big deal. And actually, I was talking to someone who lives in Florida, and he's like, you know, Hurt fans complain – about paying four ninety nine for for that, and then play, paying for herd vision, um, I don't know if there's enough there. Four ninety nine is 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 a good price to to justify that. All right, we'll talk more about the television package a little bit later, but I want to turn my attention now to Marshall soccer. And joining us on the program now, the head coach of the Marshall men's soccer team, Chris Grassy. And coach, good catching up with you again. You know. Uh, we're talking about football being back, and I think we're talking about soccer in real in reality. Not not football, not Don Holiday. We're talking about Marshall soccer being back. Oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah, the yeah, real football is a football. <laughs> How you been, Coach? I've been great. I've been great. How are you? I'm good. So um, you've got um, you've got action coming up soon. So uh, that means you've been you've been right at it, just like everybody else, and. Uh, 
How do you feel uh, at this point, uh, where you were last year to where you're at now? I feel uh, much more comfortable this year. I obviously settled in. I kind of know what to expect with, with the conference and, and with opponents and, and, and sort of from uh, like a pre preseason perspective. Um, plus, I thought we made such big strides as a team last year, um, especially even in the spring. We saw sort of great growth and, and great understanding for uh, of the guys of what we're trying to do. So I'm much more confident this year, and I'm very excited about the recruiting class that we brought in. You know, we're going to end up with with, a, with 15 new players on the squad of 25. So um, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of a lot of unknown, but a lot of things to be positive about. So I just really can't wait till Wednesday gets here and we can really start training with the guys. So this team maybe feels more like it's um, it's more of a product of what you're trying to put together. I mean, yeah, you had a good squad last year and you had some things go your way, but is it now where, okay, you've had your hands on this enough so you can start molding it a little bit more into what you want it to be? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely feel that way. You know, we brought in um, a big plus last year. Uh, you know, we've, we've had a few transfer out and, and we graduated quite a lot. So I think we're, we're down to about three guys who were here, you know, when I got here January of 17. So I really do feel like, you know, this is the beginning of working with sort of the players that I've picked and chosen and um, vetted and, and kind of feel like I understand my system. So uh, it, it does feel a lot more like my team and more than, a, a, I guess, a team that I inherited or a team that... Um, you know, somebody else had coached and influenced. What do you think? Um, where do you think the biggest strength of this team is going to be once uh, you get out there and see what you've got? But what are you anticipating? Well, no, I mean, even like looking right through through the squad. I mean, we've got um, two, you know, a junior and senior goalkeeper who both transferred in. Both have won national championships. One at Division Two, one at the NAIA level. So the competition there is going to be really strong. And then we have. Um, a couple of younger goalies pushing for time as well, so I think goalkeeper is going to be going to be really incredibly strong. Um, and then, you know, in the defence, we've we've obviously brought back guys who played together last year: Carlos, Alal, Chris Davy, John Pappas. So I think that's going to be going to be excellent in terms of the experience level that those guys have yeah. together. Um, and then, you know, through the midfield, we brought in a lot of midfielders this year. You know, we had guys who did a good job for us last year in the midfield. But we we really brought in that, and then last year we didn't really have any true out and out wingers, and this year we you know we've got four of them, so it's going to give us a whole uh, whole of the level of, of pace and skill in the attack that we just didn't have last year. Um, so I think that's going to be much more exciting for sort of for fans to see and for us to um, you know to take against some of the opposition that we're playing against. We'll have a few more solutions this year to to the problems of breaking down teams' defenses. Well, you, was that what it just took, maybe going a year through Conference USA, sort of figuring out the type of kid you needed, or did you really already have that in mind and just needed to go out and get that type of kid? Um, I already had that in mind. I mean, I like to play a possession-based style of play, so I like a like basically positional. You know, you see guys like Pep Guardiola, they're obviously the, the masters of it, and we all aspire to, to that level. But, you know, in college, I, I really do like a technical player who's very good on the ball, who thinks really fast. Um, who, who can solve problems in their head quickly. Um, so that's the kind of player that I'm attracted to when I'm recruiting. Uh, so I wanted to bring in a few more of those guys. I knew I needed those guys. I needed more of those guys on the team who were comfortable on the ball, who were really skillful, but who were smart. And then I knew I needed more pace. I needed more skill. I needed those guys who can go 1v1 out in the white space, those guys who can break people down and uh, you know get assists and score goals. So uh, I really knew I needed them last year. Uh, it was just a, just a case of you know guys graduating, paying off scholarship money, and, and moving on to you know to, to their life after soccer, and, and us being able to free up guys uh, scholarships for, to bring guys in. So I think if anything, after Conference USA season last year, I'm even more confident that this style will work, and, and with these guys, we'll we'll be able to do well because we play against a lot of teams. You know, Charlotte, Old Dominion, um, South Carolina, guys that are very direct. They play very sort of Good, they're good, disciplined soccer players, but they play very direct. They play four four two. They try and, uh, you know, get in your face and, and and push balls in behind you and make it a physical battle. And we try and play a little bit more um, in possession. We try and dictate the game a little bit more. We try and do some of the more risky things with the ball. But if you have the more competent guys, I feel like it's more of an effective strategy long term. 
And so it's a kind of a antithesis. You know, I feel even more confident that this day will work going forward. Now, your schedule came out a couple months ago, and you go top to bottom, and you think, wow, this is going to be really a challenge. Uh, your first exhibition is going to be against Rio Grande, and then you've got Seton Hall uh, on the road in exhibition play on the 18th. After that, um, everything uh, starts to count as far as the win-loss record is concerned. And really, top to bottom, you look at where you're going and, and the teams you're playing, um, it's pretty challenging. Um, and that was your ultimate goal, I'm sure, right, to play some of the better teams and get this team ready for conference or just to up the profile of Marshall soccer? Yeah, it's sort of all of the above. I think, you know, we needed to, all of the best teams, you know, whether it's Akron, um, you know, who've been outside sort of the, the sort of power conferences, um, teams like that. If you want to be the best, you got to play the best, and you got to beat the best. So, I thought, you know, why not go to, you know, Big Ten, Ohio State, Virginia, um, Butler, Big East champions for the last two years, and just, you know, that's the the cream of the crop. So let's see where we stack up. You know, and even if we, you know, hopefully we win all those games, but if we lose a game here or, you know, tie a tough game on the road, then. It's all learning experiences for us that will help us in conference. And you know, I think the, the thing about our conference in, in soccer, conference USA, is that you know it's a top five conference. You know, we're, we're probably about fourth in the in the rankings over the last five years in terms of teams in the NCAA and, and RPI standing. So it's really a tough conference that if we're playing teams that are nowhere near the level of say an FIU or a Charlotte or New Mexico um, or South Carolina, Kentucky, you know, we, it's just going to be. We don't want to have that big step smack us in the face when we get there. So we want to be, you know, if anything, playing teams that are better or playing teams that are at the same level as conference teams. So so that was kind of the, the, the philosophy behind it. And also thought we were going to have a strong squad this year. So, you know, why not test them against the best in the country? Are some of these uh, games you've scheduled also um, the games that are going to get a return visit or, you know, what was your goal in some of these other than just trying to get some teams that are going to up your profile? Are you, were you looking for teams that maybe you can bring back to Huntington and, and generate some excitement? Yeah, well, we played so we played Akron, um, who were a power in, in men's soccer. Uh, we played them last year, and so the deal with them was they'd return in 2019. Um, you know, my goal with, with that was, you know, by 2019, through my third year in the job, I feel like, you know, we'll be competing at that level, them coming to, to Huntington to play will give us um, a good advantage and so maybe we can we can knock them off. So yes, we want to play good teams and we want to raise the profile, but I think by two thousand nineteen when they come to us we should you know, we should be able to do uh you know, hang in there and and, and hold our own and, and I'm I'll be looking for, to win that game, you know. So it was kind of a combination of both. You know, a team like Virginia, we go there, you know, they don't really do returns, they, they kinda of, uh, give guarantees and, and kinda of buy all their games. Um, it's difficult to get some of those teams to come to you, but you know, with the ACC, um, that, that being more of an RPI matchup in terms of it really helps. You know, if we can get a result, I mean, we're almost almost halfway halfway there into the tournament. But you know, even if we don't, we, um, you know, it, it ups our RPI standing um, regardless. So we just got to take care of business in, in some of the other games. And I think, you know, if we want to, we talk to the guys all the time about winning winning trophies. Uh, winning the conference, conference championship or conference uh, tournament and getting to the NCAA tournament. And we're going to have to play tough teams away on the road. So it's as, as much of that as it is about getting prepared to, to win championships and be in the tournament and, and kind of push the envelope a little bit. It also looks like uh, you've got some nice groupings of teams coming in. It's going to be a fun alumni weekend. You know, I can look way ahead. You can't. But uh, you know, Charlotte <laughs> there. Uh, Florida Atlantic, which uh, seems to be Marshall's new rival and everybody's new rival in Conference USA since the football success that, that program's having. And uh, I tell you, the program that I, I hope you see play yearly, I, I liked watching Northern Kentucky and Marshall last year, and I think that's a, maybe a pairing that could uh, could be more frequent or at least a yearly thing because it seemed like those two squads really got after each other last year. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a great matchup. I think we have... You know, we have a possession style. We want to keep the ball and try and dictate the tempo. And they have a very fast break, um, counter-attacking style. And they're, and they're quite a physical team. So it is, you know, something that says in boxing, you know, styles make fights. And, and that's definitely one that makes makes for a good game. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's a, you know, two and a half hours away. It's it's quite easy logistically to get to. So we hope to keep them on the schedule. And we hope they keep continue to grow and do better. I know Stu Riddle 
as that coach and I know he's going to do a tremendous job. He's one year into the job like I am, so I'm looking forward to seeing you know what he puts together and watching them improve and you know continue to play them and and get results and beat them and <laughs> have a good games that are entertaining, but but get the win on the end. Marshall soccer coach Chris Grassi joining us on the program. Soccer season's almost here for the men. The women are already a little closer to getting their first match on. And this year. You get a lot of things that I think are pointing towards the growth of soccer. Uh, even though the United States was not in the World Cup, there was a, a lot of success there as far as uh, television is concerned. People were watching the World Cup, having an interest in that. And, of course, you look at uh, Cincinnati, which is a few hours driving time away. They're getting a, a, an MLS team, so there seems to be growth in the region. Uh, have you felt any of that? as far as going out, talking to people, trying to get people excited about Marshall soccer? I mean, I know it's not going to be a direct uh, correlation, but still, is is it there? Are you feeling it, and has it been helpful? Well, uh, sure. I mean, in, in, the, in the greater context, it, it's almost unbelievable from when I first – I mean, I came to, to college in, in West Virginia in the 90s um, and just worked with the sort of ODP program there, and it was very much a sort of – under the radar sport, and, and now with the, the participation in, in club soccer, uh, with you know viewership, uh, you know every, almost every TV station, you know NBC Sports has English soccer, and ESPN carries their national team games and MLS games more often now. And you've got the German league on on Fox and the Spanish league. There's just so much available on TV compared to you know 15 years ago, 16 years ago, and then you've got. You know the, the participation numbers are up. It's, it's, it seems to be getting a lot more second generation um, kids playing it. So they're second generation to, to play soccer and third generation and, and, and people who's their primary sport. And I think it's it's definitely growing. You can definitely see. You know, if you take a step back from you know where it was you know, 25 years ago to, to now, it's just night and day. And they do feel that in the community. You know, we we run soccer camps in the summer, so. You can definitely feel the buzz of, of the, the kids when they're out there. You know, they, they want to come to the game. You know, we, we talk about the first game against Duquesne when you, you know, they want to show up, they want to bring their friends, they want to support, they want to they want to see, you know, the, the Marshall players do the things that they've been trying to do. So you do feel that excitement, especially in a World Cup. Yeah, it seems like a fever carries on and, 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 and goes over into the, you know, the college season. So we definitely hope to exploit that a little bit and, you know, help that boost our uh, attendance at games and, and almost the atmosphere as well at games, you know, have people take some lessons from the, the fans that are singing and dancing and having a great time and, you know, bring that atmosphere out to uh, Hoops Family Field. Chris Grassi, our guest. The season's almost here. Uh, looking forward to having you on more this year. As, uh, you've got a great home schedule, so I think fans should uh, really be uh, excited for it. And the road schedule is pretty nice as well. So, uh, it, it looks like if you are a fan of herd soccer, you're definitely going to get your money's worth uh, when you either watch it on digital or come out to the game. Yeah, definitely. Coach, as always, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Good luck. We'll talk to you soon, and uh, can't wait to uh, see uh, what this team looks like here in a few days. Yeah, perfect. And thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. That's Chris, head coach of the Marshall soccer team. We're going to take our next break, come back. We'll get your phone calls in, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. More on the way. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Friday edition. The Drive continues on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Thanks for joining me. Today is day number one. Camp's going on for herd football, so that means it's time to figure out what this team's going to really look like. And I know um, I know a lot of you are excited because you should be. You should be excited. There's some buzz here. Uh, it was fun yesterday to to watch the Hall of Fame game as well. Watch a little bit of it. Listen to a little bit of it because uh, the radio side also had uh, several of the guys on. Randy Moss, of course, getting a lot of buzz. Uh, he has been doing a great job of just representing himself, representing Marshall. You, know, you can tell that he's enjoying himself. And then it was just fun yesterday. 
Opening kick, boom. Vedvik knocks it out, does a great job. Heard football player starting the NFL season with Baltimore. And I thought that was fun. That was really one of the few reasons why I watched that thing. As much as I love NFL football, I'm not watching that many preseason games. I'll, I'll look at the Bengals. I'll have to catch the Bengals on replay just because the NFL got smart and decided, you know what, we're going to charge stupid money for those, uh, those preseason games. And for most people, that's not too much of a problem because if you're in the Cincinnati market, you're going to see the Bengals. Uh, if you're in Huntington, you're not because for some reason we don't get those games. If you're in the Cleveland market, you're going to see the Browns. If you are in the Pittsburgh market, you're going to see the Steelers preseason. If you're in Washington market, you're going to see the Redskins. You're going to see all your teams. NFL's like, you know, those players, um, or those fans, you want to see your, your favorite team and you're not in that market. Okay, we're going to charge you money. Stupid money. Because I used to get a, a really inexpensive package. It was a digital package. And I would just watch those games, stream them. It was a few bucks. Yeah, sure. Now they, they package it in with their NFL Rewind package. And uh, no, I don't need to pay for highlights and rewinds. I'm good. Thank you. Make it easy for me to be a fan. Why is there always a, a path of resistance to me or you being a fan. Make it easier for me to be a fan. Don't make it expensive for me to watch your product. Don't monetize it so much that I don't care. It's like the NFL Sunday ticket. I would buy that religiously every year. I'm dropping lots of money on the NFL Sunday ticket, even though I'm only getting maybe half the games. And part of it was because, well, our... Local CBS affiliate is not going to show Bengals games. And so, all right, the games they don't show, I'm going to watch. Fine. I'll get the Sunday ticket. It's got to the point now where uh, I've got to sell blood once a week for 52 weeks a year. Continuously, I just have to go sell blood if I want the package. What's the going rate for uh, for blood donations now? Selling plasma, right? That's how college kids uh, make some of their extra. Sell some plasma once a week. It's like, no, I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, if you don't want to make it easy for me to be a fan, then fine. I'm not going to pay. And a lot of that's DirecTV, which, by the way, I am a proponent of DirecTV. But they are just cashing in to the point where, you know where I'm reinvesting that NFL Sunday ticket money and I'm going to have leftover? I'm reinvesting that into the NHL package. I get more games throughout the year. I get the digital package as well. So halftime Marshall basketball game, tablet out. I'm watching a period of hockey. That's going to be my halftime entertainment at Marshall game. Get my notes in order, halftime entertainment. Going to watch some hockey, maybe. I probably wouldn't do it that much. But I can watch the replay later. So make it easy for me, man. Help me out. Help me help you help me to be a fan. That's all I've got to say on that topic. All right, we're going to take our our last break. We'll come back. We'll carry on. It's the Drive Friday edition, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Don't worry. Paul Swan has the wheel on the Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Friday edition. The drive continues on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Next week, a uh, different schedule of sorts. Uh, we'll have a collection, a rogues gallery of sorts. So we've got Bill Cornwell coming in next week. Uh, Adam Rogers is going to come in next week. Uh, I got Woody. I talked him into Monday. So he's going to be down at the Union, his old stomping ground. So. Hang out with him on Wood on, on Woody Day Monday. So uh, I've got him coming in on Monday. Looking forward to hearing uh, hearing all those guys. And then back when it's all said and done, we'll be so much closer to football season. So much, and we'll have a better idea what this team's going to look like. And again, we're talking practice. It's 
it's a good way to gauge your team as a fan, but don't put all your stock in just what you see on the surface. But camp schedule looks like this. Uh, right now, 3.50 was the start time earlier today. Tomorrow, 3.50. Sunday is going to be fan day, 1 to 3, 15 p.m. Uh, gates are going to open at 12.30 p.m. So if you're interested in fan day, uh, you've got that. And then Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday of next week, 3.50 p.m. Friday is going to be 3.50 p.m., and then the Big Green Season Ticket Holder Appreciation Night, again, that's at 6.30 p.m. And then the 11th, 13th, 14th, and 15th, um, the schedule will ramp up. Uh, 11th, 13th, and 14th, 3.50 p.m. And then starting on Wednesday, August 15th, it's at 30 p.m. So for those of you who maybe can't get down there at 3.50 p.m. because, well, you work and you, you can't get off work, Schedule gets a little bit easier for you as uh, 6.30 p.m. will be the new start time there. For those of you who like to go, watch the herd and camp. And then that's going to go from the 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th. And then after that, I'm sure things are going to get shut down as we get closer to the start of the actual football season itself. So looking forward to that. And, of course, we'll start previewing. When we get back... When this show uh, f- comes back in um, in full form a week from Monday, after the guest hosts are done, we'll dig really deep into Marshall and Miami. Miami is a team that last year I thought was going to be a, a more meaningful win. They ended up on the season five and seven. Now, Marshall kind of compared okay with them. Marshall was pretty close with them. Uh, if you look at what the two teams look like on the field. Marshall last year averaging 239.6 passing yards, and Miami was 237.7. Um, that was um, that was the offensive yards. Defense um, pretty close. Marshall had six interceptions. Miami had 11. Uh, Marshall um, a little bit better on rush defense, uh, 121.2. Miami 168.8. Pass defense, uh, Herb was 220.5. Miami was 200.8. So similar teams. I think Marshall will have the edge, of course, in this one again um, because Marshall, I think Marshall as a upper-level Conference USA team is probably going to be better than a mid-level is where people are gauging Miami right now, a mid-level MAC team. MAC team, Conference USA team, not that much difference, to be honest with you. If Marshall and Ohio played, that would be a really good competitive game, I think, this year. Next year should be fun as well. But just at first glance, I think Marshall's going to have the edge in this one. Honestly, Marshall's going to have the edge in the first two. And then we'll see what this team looks like against South Carolina and NC State. But I like Marshall's chances in most of these games. I really think this schedule sets up nicely for the Thundering Herd. Maybe this could be the year. Marshall can break through. I would say Marshall is going to be the team to challenge Florida Atlantic. And that happens on October 20th on CBS Sports Network, no less. That's going to be the game. And you get Western and Middle and Old Dominion out of the way, and then after Florida Atlantic, you got Southern Miss, Charlotte, UTSA, and FIU. Uh, I still say don't sleep on UTSA. Charlotte, I don't know what they're going to be able to offer. But, again, uh, this Marshall-Miami game, Marshall is going to face a, a, a veteran team. Miami comes back with the majority of – all their skill positions. They've got eight starters back from last year. And their quarterback, Gus Raglan. I mean, they're going to be more solid at quarterback, I think, than they're heard, at least on the surface, not from a standpoint of talent, if they're secure in that position. Because Gus Raglan passed for over 2,000 yards, had 19 touchdowns in just nine games last year. So... He's definitely improved as a quarterback from that point. 
So the quarterback position is going to be pretty good for Miami. Marshall just needs to figure out what the quarterback position is going to look like, where they're going to go. We'll talk about that more in the weeks ahead. That's going to do it for this edition. We're getting closer to football season. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we'll be back next week. It's going to be a combination of guest hosts. I hope you enjoy. And then um, after that, back, rested, recovered, ready to go. Take on football season. For our producer, Gabriel Sellers, I'm Paul Swan. Thanks for joining me today. It's been The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. WRBC Huntington. W227BS Huntington. ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Huntington Sports Station.